Hello, my friends. A very good morning. And may God bless all of you. And bless you indeed. And He starts blessing you and myself as well. When we meditate upon His Word, and then He speaks with us, this is the greatest blessing there is all over the world. There is no gold, there is no silver, no wealth, there is nothing in this world that can compare to the greatness, the greatness of the revelations of the kingdom of heaven to human beings. Obviously, this is only possible when there is humility, just like a child that accepts, that receives the word of God as if it was the law, unchangeable. The law of God that makes us live according to His will here on earth. Praise God. May God bless you all then with this meditation that I will try to pass on to you what God has given us. And I hope that the Holy Spirit, I believe that the Holy Spirit will speak, will touch, will awaken the intelligent faith, the intelligent faith, the rational faith, the faith that thinks, that considers, that evaluates, and then gets to a conclusion and makes the right decision. Anyway, yesterday we spoke about divine healing. We've been speaking about the faith to receive divine healing. Jesus sent his disciples. First, he called the twelve and sent them to heal the sick. All those who are sick, he said, go into the whole world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, all of them, cast out demons, resurrect the dead, and so on and so forth, and preach the kingdom of God. This is too glorious. This direction is powerful. Then what happens? What's the difficulty people find to be healed? What has been the difficulty people are finding to be healed, free, delivered, blessed? What's the difficulty people are finding to see the kingdom of God being manifested and materialized in their life here on earth? Do you know what the difficulty is? The difficulty is the following. We were born in a culture that is ignorant, that is moving backwards. We were born in a world that is evil, filthy, sinful. And due to that, we are blind before the greatness of God. Jesus said, go and preach the gospel, and only the gospel can deliver, which is the word of God. So as long as we didn't have knowledge of the word of God, then we were blind. For example, every religion, Everyone would walk, would live in their own religion. They all had their own religion. So at first, we were Catholic. And in the Catholic faith, we learned that our sicknesses, our infirmities, the problems we face, our misery, our miseries are the cross that we had to carry. And so we would comfort ourselves with this cross. And the others, the rich ones, would be there enjoying the best of the land. And the poor, or to the poor, a heavy cross was given. However, those 
that taught us that it was a cross. They were there enjoying, ostentating the pleasures of the world. Meaning, in the Catholic Church, we learned that our problems was our cross that we had to carry. In the Evangelical Church, in the Evangelical Church, usually they teach that our sicknesses and infirmities, our pains, our miseries, are what? They are a trial. It's a trial. You know, when a person doesn't have, when they don't have faith, or they don't have basis, they have no knowledge of the Word of God, then they come up with names that will comfort the person or make people accept their miseries and problems and sicknesses. That's the reality. Inside of the Catholic Church, those problems was our cross. Inside of the Evangelical Church, these problems, miseries, sicknesses are trials and tribulations. Trials. Or they are the will of God for us. Oh, it's God's will. It's God's will. Those who are spiritists, they say that this is a karma. So we would have to carry our problems, infirmities and pain because it's a karma. And so many other religions and every one of them with their own philosophy one say, oh, this is your destiny. You were born for that. You were born to suffer, to remain sick, and so on and so forth. In other religions, they say, oh, this was envy. It's envy. That's why in many cultures, when a child is born, parents usually follow a lot of rituals, superstitious rituals that is demonic something demonic and they think that that ritual is going to preserve, to protect the child, but that is actually a tool that the devil uses in order to deceive people with this sort of you know, you, you give you good luck protect you from envy and so on and so forth so every religion has their own excuse, in a way. People don't usually like when I speak like this, but what can I do? That's the reality. I experienced that. I experienced it. My mother didn't do any ritual of protection on me because she couldn't afford it. She had to work to put food on the table. So there was no time to worry about this. But anyway, however it is, Excuse me. The greatest difficulty or hindrance that people find in order to be healed by faith is exactly this baggage of cheap philosophies and religious fantasies that are ignorant, which the world passes on to people. However, when we think, when we stop to think of the Word of God, you see that Jesus healed everyone. Everyone who came to Jesus was healed. So this thing of saying, oh, this is God's will for me to be healed, or perhaps it's my trial, or perhaps I have to go through this. Job suffered a lot, but they don't really know the story of Job. They say things they don't know. They don't know Job's story. The one that put those diseases on Job was the devil. The one who killed Job's children was the devil. The one who destroyed Job's life was the devil. It was the devil, the devil and the devil. And God allowed that in order for there to be a lesson, a teaching for us here. The evil comes from the devil, from hell, and the good comes from God. And God reestablished, restored twice as much everything 
Job lost. So Job was a blessed man, and he is a blessed man, even though, let's say, he was instigated by evil to turn against God. Therefore, dear friend, the problem is, does God really want to heal me? Is it God's will for me to be healed? Wouldn't this be, Bishop, wouldn't this disease be a trial to my faith? I have to accept the situation in order to return to God and consecrate myself more. No, this is cheap talk, friends. The point is, those who believe, we receive it. Those who don't, won't receive. Jesus healed everyone who believed in him and sent his disciples to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed, to cast out demons, to heal the blind, the deaf, the paralytics, everyone. By the way, by the way, Jesus said, pay attention, that when, pay attention, Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, it's because certainly the kingdom of God has come to you. Meaning, the kingdom of God comes not only with words, but it comes with the manifestation of the power of God. And this is the proposal for today in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the temple of Solomon at 10 a.m., at 3 p.m. and also at 8 p.m. The temple will be open, wide open, with free parking. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay to be healed. You don't have to give an offering to receive your healing. No, you just have to manifest your faith, your faith in the promises of God, in the Word of God. The word of God cannot return to him void. Those who believe in the word believe in God. Those who believe in the word of God believe in God. Those who don't believe in the word of God don't believe in God. If you believe, you receive it. It doesn't matter if you deserve it or not. If you are a saint or a sinner, it doesn't matter who you are, man, woman. It doesn't matter whatever is your your profession, it doesn't matter your situation, your physical, financial, or social situation. It doesn't matter if you are good or evil, if you killed and stole and destroyed, or if you only did charity your whole life. If you believe, you receive it. If you don't, you won't receive. But who believes, O oh Bishop? Who, who are the ones who believe? I don't know. I only know the following. Those who believe will go forward, and those who don't will stay behind. Though, I mean, those who believe will come. Those who don't, they will stay at home. Because when the person believes, it doesn't matter if they live far, if it's raining, if it's cold, hot, the weather. It doesn't matter the circumstances. They want to be healed. Because once a person has a stomach ache, they go to the doctors and it doesn't matter the weather outside. It doesn't matter if the weather is good or bad, if they have to get a bus, a train or whatever. If the person believes, they come from wherever they are, whether by bike, you, you know, whatever they have to walk, they have to ride on a donkey, a horse, a chariot. They come however way they find, because they believe. They believe, and those who believe it, we receive. And those who don't, won't receive. A woman that had a flow of blood, a woman that was bleeding day and night without ceasing, that woman with that flow of blood had spent everything she had to be healed with physicians and doctors at the time until she heard of Jesus and she came from afar and she came to meet Jesus. She came from afar, but very far place. And back then, there were no vehicles, there was no Uber or taxi or, or bike or cars. There was nothing. There was only horses and donkeys. She made a way. She went and when she arrived where Jesus was and she saw a multitude of people, the devil blew in her mind, in her ears. Look, he's too busy. He won't answer you. 
You are wasting your time. Look at that. You came from so far away. Look at the multitude. It's not going to be possible. But she was so determined, but so determined that her faith that should be healed, that she said, okay, okay, Satan, he won't answer me, but if only I go behind him and touch his garment, then I will be healed. Look at how determined she was. She determined that. No one taught her. No one said, go there, touch his garments. No, she didn't learn this with religion. She was moved by her own faith. So these are the people who are chosen. Those who believe, they go. Those who don't, they stay behind. Those who believe, come. Those who don't, they won't come. They stay stuck in time and space. So you who are suffering, whatever is your sickness, your infirmity, your pain, do you believe in the Word of God? I'm not asking you to believe in me, not at all. I'm not asking you to believe in the universal church of the kingdom of God. I'm not asking you to believe in the pastor who will hold the service. I ask you to believe in the Word of God. It's the Word of God. If Jesus didn't want, if it wasn't the will of God to heal you, then he wouldn't heal those who are sick, those who came to him. As it was the case of this woman with the issue of blood, she touched Jesus in, in his garments and straight away she was healed. Straight away, straight away she was healed. So this is the faith. We are blowing the trumpet. We open the doors of the temples, of the church. We put people of faith there to help people, to heal people, is not to pray for people. If you go to the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God today to receive healing, and the pastor starts saying, Oh my God, heal this person, Lord, forget about it. Get out and go to another Universal Church and find another pastor. Because a pastor of faith will not pray for you to be healed. He will heal you. But Bishop, what authority does the pastor have in the universal church of the kingdom of God to heal someone? Well, the authority of the word of God. Jesus is the one who said. Jesus said. He said like this. The text says he appointed 70, 70 disciples and sent them two by two before his face. He said, go before my face, go before my face, two by two, into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And when they obeyed, then they performed miracles, meaning the Holy Spirit used them in order to heal people. So this is how it works. When the pastor prays for the sick, if he prays saying, Oh God, let your will be done, forget about it. Turn your back and go away. No, pastor, don't pray. Don't pray. I don't want prayers. I want you to be healed. You are going to go to the universal church today determined. No, I'm going there to be healed. I'm not going to go there to try. It's not an adventure. Not at all. You are going there to be healed. If you leave your house, your place, where you are, determined with this faith. No, I'm going there because it's written. Jesus didn't command us to pray for the sick. He said to, to heal them. So I'm going there for this man of God to heal me. This is the faith that guides the lives of those who believe. This is the faith of those who are chosen. The faith that this word here, the word of God will be fulfilled in the lives of those who use their faith. So you who believe in the word of God, in the word of God, not the word of the pastor, it's the word of God. The pastor will be obeying the word of God. He will simply determine that you are going to be healed straight away. If a sick person comes to ask my help and say, Bishop, pray for me, straight away I'll say, be healed in Jesus' name. 
If this is your need, this is healing, then be healed. That's it. That's all. If you find a man of God, he will not pray, Oh God, let your will be done. No, not at all. God's will is to heal everyone. Everyone. Diseases didn't come from God. They didn't come from God. They didn't spring up from, from the earth. It didn't fall from heaven. Sicknesses come due to sin. And once the person the person believes in the word of God, believing in the power of the name of Jesus, believing in the power of the word of the Lord Jesus, believing in the power of the spirit of Jesus, then it's over. There is no diseases, infirmities anymore. This is how it works. So if you go to the church today, the universal church in the temple of Solomon, it is open at 10 a.m., at 3 p.m., and also at 8 p.m. By the way, I don't know if in the morning there is a meeting in the temple, but if it's not in the temple of Solomon, they will have there in the, the, the church on the side, there in Brass. And you can go straight to the, to the meeting there at 10 a.m. At 3 p.m., because there is a, a work, a refurbishment work, so we are avoiding to have too many meetings there so the workers can conclude their work. If not, there's a lot of noise and no one will hear anything inside of the church. So it's better if you go to the temple. It's only at 3 p.m. and also at 8 p.m. You are our guest and you don't have to pay for anything. Go with your faith. Bring your faith. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Bring your faith. Bring your faith in the fulfillment of the Word of God, because the Spirit of the Word of God, the Spirit of the name of God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, will be upon the man of God, and obviously he will exercise his faith in, in that obligation that he has, which is what Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, Heal the sick. Heal, not pray. Heal the sick. Those who believe will come. Those who don't believe will stay behind. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Praise God.